Let me take it out. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Tom Sykes. I'm a TV cameraman and I also run a company called Solo 16 Broadcast. We have a small TV studio, which I'm talking to you from in now, and we primarily offer live streaming services for both television and the corporate market. One of the uh, dilemmas, I suppose, that we face with live streaming is areas that we go to to create a broadcast where there is no 4G connection and the, the venue can't supply an internet connection at all. So up to now, we have been hiring KA satellite dishes from a variety of different companies, both ones on vehicles and ones not on vehicles, until today. I'm putting together this series of videos to explore how SpaceX's Starlink satellite network can be used to enhance live broadcast. If you missed the first film, this link is in the description and is worth a watch. It's also worth liking and subscribing to my channel to be notified of new videos. Hit the bell icon. This film picks up where the last one ended. So right after making the first video, I had an issue disconnecting the dish from the stand. It was well and truly stuck. And after waiting four days for a reply from Starlink, I decided to crack open the WD-40, which thankfully did the trick. The second most likely place a cameraman would want to place this dish is on the roof of their van, away from the other kit. Again, a web search showed that I could buy two magnetic brackets for just over 20 quid. I coupled this with Starlink's pivot mount for £57, and for under 80 quid, I had a very strong roof mountable stand for the dish. This also fits in the Pelican case. There is a link to the description below to the magnetic brackets, should you want to buy them. So I started doing tests on the 13th of June 2022, and it's important to note that some of these videos were shot before the service speeds have increased. So do watch to the end to understand more about the current coverage. I'm aware of the ideal way the dish should be rigged. Here's you can see some images from SpaceX directly. But as a news cameraman, I often don't have ideal conditions. So I'm testing it in multiple locations to see what the outcome may be. So here we are in the garden, um, domestic garden, we're testing it in. So the aperture from that fence or that tree there to the building is a, probably about 35 feet at most. So first of all, I tried it here. So it was kind of equidistant between the two. Obviously this was an obstruction um, and it was about there. And I was getting anything between 190 down and probably about four meg up consistently. In a real world scenario, if you haven't got a huge amount of space to rig it, I mean, there's a pretty big aperture there. So obviously if we can get it up higher, it would help a bit, but the download speed for, for normal internet use is, is more than adequate in either position, but for uploading and what we want to do, um, it's still nowhere near the speeds uh, that other people have been getting. I also wanted to test the dish attached to a lighting stand, which would get it higher up. The downside of this is there was some movement on the dish, but this did not knock off the connection, unlike a KA satellite. The improvements higher up appeared to be that the upload speed increased by a couple of meg. Of course, in my business, the upload speed is the only thing we care about as we're broadcasting outbound video. Today, I tested the same location as a month ago, so let's see the results. So as you can see, it's taken um, a very short period of time to set this up. In fact, it was from setup to actually connecting to the internet, it was uh, just over four minutes. The ants are enjoying the stand. So just to give you context of where this is, this is, uh, the kind of aperture that I have here 
and uh, so it's pretty open. One of the things I noticed here was that it initially was pointing straight up and I was getting much faster speeds and then it decided itself to change position which I don't believe we have any control over and now the download speed has dropped down to about 20 meg and the upload speed is varying between 5 and 20 um, so I'm going to leave it here again for a bit um, and do uh, do some more ping tests over probably an hour and see if it changes at all. So the takeaway really for this location uh, is that we're not getting anywhere near the speeds that we got in completely open air which again is what you'd expect but we are now getting uh, at this location as opposed to the previous tests that we ran um, before the extra satellites went into low orbit we are getting more closer to a reliable 10 meg connection so um, we've done a, a field test with complete open air. We've done a field test at this location before and after the extra um, Starlink satellites have gone up. And the, it would appear that the increase in upload speed is potentially as a result of those dishes going up. And it's giving us more like a 10 meg feed, um, which is then in the, in the realms of being usable as a sole connection if you wanted to risk that for um, TV broadcast. During the recent heat wave, I drove to a location with little to no cellular connection and I mounted the dish on the van for the first time. The location was truly in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so I'm doing my first kind of completely independent um, Starlink test. I've come up to uh, Whitehorse Hill, which is near Swindon, which is completely open. As you can see, probably a bit windy. Getting a tiny bit of movement on the dish. There's the mag panel, as you can see. And it's pretty rock solid. Um, just done a speed test. It's getting about 165 down and about 15 meg up. So, powering it off my Jackery. 1000 uh, very very expensive battery bank and it's come out of the uh, Pelly flight case that it all packs down into including the main stand so just really showcasing um, very little to no 4G out here at all and I'm getting uh, uh, as I said nearly 200 meg down and 15 meg up which is obviously more than enough for web, to, uh, web and TV broadcast. I'm going to stay here for a while and do some ping tests over about an hour and see if there's any fluctuation. So as you can see, things are getting better as more satellites are launched. And I'm pleased to report it was very stable with no change to the speed. The next thing I wanted to get sorted was a travel case. After some research online, it appeared that it would fit in a Pelican case 1610. I tried to find a cheaper version with similar dimensions, but nothing was wide and deep enough. The case holds the dish, base stand, just about, router and cabling, and also a magnetic mounting option, which I've built. Find out about more of that later. The ground base is very snug though, and some may prefer a larger case. There is a link in the description below to the case. Let's not mess about though, this case is big and very heavy. And whilst the Starlink system is much lighter and easier than a portable KA satellite dish, it's still a beast and not something you'd probably carry in a domestic car or all the time. Starlink have now produced a backpack case for the dish, which also incorporates the stand, router and cabling, but this is not currently available in the UK and would not be hard wearing enough for a lot of my work. I then connected a power soak test using one of my portable power units. I managed to get nearly five hours of Starlink use from the one unit. The product is sadly no longer sold, but a similar one can be bought using the link in the description. SpaceX have put hundreds more satellites into low orbit in the last few weeks, 
meaning the amount of coverage over the UK has grown massively. I'm now seeing upload speeds of 10 megabits minimum rather than the 4 megabits previously. The speeds obviously are dependent on the time of day and location. As you can see here, there can be very few satellites orbiting the UK and then suddenly a large cluster can come over. I assume this is what can vary the speed a fair bit, that would seem obvious. As more and more are added, I would hope that the speeds will become more stable. As this video is made, there are still some places in the UK where for various reasons the Starlink cannot be used. The main ones are North Scotland and Central London, although London should be fixed by the end of 2022, something to do with Ofcom. If you try and order a dish to buy in one of these locations, you will see more information on the screen as to why it's not currently available. You can always test a postcode to check that coverage is available using the Starlink map link in the description. Let's have a quick look at the Wi-Fi range in an external environment. You can see where the Wi-Fi uh, router is and I'm here and it works fine here facing it but as soon as I turn my back away it's telling me that the signal's dropping off massively. So the range off the back of this Wi-Fi router is probably to be expected is not massive. You might want to put a booster on it. I'm sure that this will be increased indoors as the Wi-Fi has walls to bounce off etc. It's important to point out that the router is only Wi-Fi based unless you buy the Ethernet adapter, which is about another £35. I will probably buy a high gain Wi-Fi router, which can be mounted next to the dish and would increase the range of the Wi-Fi to around 600 feet. The current cost for the service is £114 a month, including VAT, but this can be paused between months if needed, which is something I would do. So how will I use it and when? Well, even with the big van that I have, it's still a bit too heavy to carry around all the time and obviously the expense in fu extra fuel. So I only plan to take it out with me on national news stories uh, for live uh, broadcasts or for breakfast shifts. So what do I charge a broadcaster to use this service? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions or want to discuss what I've posted, please do so in the comments below. Um, if there are enough people wanting to comment, I may schedule a YouTube live event to discuss these. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe for my future videos. Bye for now.